Zion and Halle United Methodist Churches of Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin, welcome you to online worship. Good morning and welcome to this time of worship, this time of praise, and welcome to this Sunday, the Sunday that is in the midst of the Memorial Day weekend. Welcome. My name is Pastor Don Drollinger, and I'm serving two churches here in the Chippewa Valley, Halley and Zion UMC. Today, we consider the importance of being in fellowship, communion, and prayer with other believers, and how good friends can help us with decisions and circumstances in our lives we will see how important it is to have friends within the family of faith. So we're going to go right to Scripture. We're going to go to Ecclesiastes chapter 4, uh, 9 through 12, words uh, written by uh, Solomon. In my Bible, it has a subtitle, The Value of a Friend. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their toil. For if they fall, one will lift up the other. But woe to one who is alone and falls and does not have another to help. Again, if two lie together, they keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? And though one might prevail against another, two will withstand one. A threefold cord is not quickly broken. And this sends the reading from Ecclesiastes. Two are better than one. I like the illustration of a man in a rowboat who has only one oar. And as hard as he tries, he simply goes in a circle. But with two proper oars, he again moves forward. Jesus understood and taught the importance of working together as a team, as partners in the faith. In Mark chapter 6, it tells of Jesus' ministry as a team effort. And Jesus sent his disciples out in two. We find in verse 6 and 7, then Jesus went around teaching from village to village, calling the twelve to him, he sent them out two by two. In my studies this past week, I ran across a word that I kind of had forgotten about, synergism. It's more of a scientific term, uh, the action of two separate agents working together has a greater total effect than the sum of their individual efforts. Let me illustrate. Bill Melvin tells about a horse pull in Canada. One horse pulled 9,000 pounds. Another managed to pull 8,000 pounds. So they thought together they should be able to pull 17,000 pounds, right? Makes sense. Well, when they tried that, not only could they pull 17,000 pounds, but when they were yoked together, the two horses actually pulled 30,000 pounds. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their work. Earl Lukacs said, no one can whistle a symphony. It takes an orchestra to play it. And likewise, no one person can sing in harmony. It takes two. The person of faith can accomplish so much more when working with a friend. When Jesus began his earthly ministry, he immediately looked for a team who would work with him, and Jesus sought out 12 good disciples. He treated and spoke of this group as his friends. In John chapter 15, Jesus said, I no longer call you servants, 
because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. You are my friends. To grow in your faith, to improve your effectiveness, your effectiveness for doing the work of the gospel, I would strongly advise you to have a close friend or many friends within the fellowship of believers. Someone that you can share issues of faith with. Someone you can pray with. Someone to share the Christian task with. And don't think that the Christian task isn't challenging. And at times, it is even dangerous. The Army Detachment was headed for the American Southwest. Prior to leaving, a military doctor instructed the men and the women on the dangers in the desert. Watch out for sidewinders, scorpions, and gila monsters. All of them are poisonous. If you are bitten, immediately suck out the poisons and spit it out. One of the young recruits in the back raised his hand. What if I get bit in the behind and can't suck out the poisons? That, said the doctor, is when you find out if you have any friends. In your efforts to be a faithful Christian, you may not get stung by a scorpion. But you know the world can and will bring you harm, at times hurt, and at times even hate. There is a lot of poison out there. So two are better than one because they have a good return for their work. If one falls down, his friend can help him up. But pity the man who falls and has no one to help him up. Now looking at verse 11. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? As Christians, we believe that ultimately we will know victory because of what Christ did for us. And yet there will be times of loneliness, times of grief, sadness. Scripture reminds us the rain will fall on the good and the bad. Recall the account of Jesus going to pray in the Garden of Gethsemane during that time we now refer to as Holy Week. You know, when, when I think of it, I really feel so bad for Jesus it was his moment, his, his greatest test of obedience that was right there before him. The, the probability of death, the loneliness he must have felt during those times. Mark chapter 14, verse 32, they went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John along with him, and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he said to them. Stay here and keep watch. And I think most of us know as the account goes, his disciples fell asleep. Oh my, how they blew an opportunity to encourage and to support, to encourage and support Jesus. This was such a low time for Jesus, and he was alone. And in the damp night air, perhaps he was cold and shivering. But how can one keep warm alone? As Christians, we need to be there for one another, to share each other's burdens and heartaches. The following is one of the many wonderful stories that came out of World War I, the depth of friendship. 
One could not but be moved by the story of a soldier who asked his officer if he might go out into no man's land between the trenches in World War I to bring one of his friends who lay wounded. You can go, said the officer, but it is not worth it. Your friend is probably killed and you will throw your own life away. But the man went. Somehow he managed to get to his friend, get him onto his body and bring him back to safe trenches. The two of them tumbled in together and they lay there in the bottom of the trench. The officer looked very tenderly on the would-be rescuer and then he said, I told you it wouldn't be worth it. Your friend is dead and you are wounded. It was worth it, sir, he said. Well, how do you mean worth it? I tell you, your friend is dead. The boy replied, yes, sir. Yes, sir, but it was worth it because when I got to him, he was still alive. And he said to me, Jim, I knew you would come. As brothers and sisters in Christ, we will not always win. But we have a tremendous responsibility and opportunity to be there for one another, especially during the low times of our lives. In verse 12, though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. Scripture is clear. We need each other. We can find strength together. I certainly like to think of verse 12 in this way. Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. Why? Because the third strand of the cord is the presence of God's Spirit in the midst of any two believers. Jesus blessed us and blesses our efforts when we work together in his name. Matthew chapter 18, verse 20, For where two or three come together in my name, there am I in their midst. Today, we are reminded by Scripture of the importance of having a friend in the faith, someone that you can pray with, someone who will simply be there, Someone you can draw strength from in those difficult times of your lives. And there will be those times. So today, let me leave you with this thought. Today, I would invite you to consider the great power and the great blessing in being with friends. Consider the joy, the healing, the purpose in being a friend, and especially, I want to say today, a friend within the fellowship of believers. Let me invite you to a wonderful project for this coming summer that is right before us. If you desire more purpose in life, if you desire a greater power and strength, if you desire a greater hope in life, consider growing in your ability to be a good friend. Be more inclusive in your circle of friends and make being a friend in the faith a very high priority in your summer activities this year. In your journey of life, more often than not, two are better than one. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you.
for these great words by Solomon that we find in Ecclesiastes that teach us and remind us of how important it is to have a friend in the faith. May it be more and more we allow ourselves to befriend others so that they might be encouraged as well. We pray these things in the name of the great friend, our Lord Jesus. Amen. Have a great week, uh, and especially uh, this weekend. Uh, be sure, take the opportunity to thank a veteran. Keep smiling brightly. Let's pray.